All right, how's everyone doing? Bear with me here, it's my first time. Keely, you must be uh, signed in under the wrong one. You're not a, not a mod. That's my wife, art is fun. Here we go. How's everyone doing? Let me turn off the music. Give me one second. All righty. Cool. So it's our first uh, live stream. Um, I think I know almost everyone in here, at least to some extent, just uh, interacting with you on the internet. But uh, I just thought it'd be neat to kind of get to know each other. And if people like have questions and that, we can talk about um, different things that have to do with hydroponics or if y'all want to talk about anything else. But uh, let me see. Hey, Gina, how are you doing? Oh, check out Gina's channel. It's awesome. Gina Walters. Joe Hector. All right. Um, let me just uh, tell you all about the cranking hydroponics. We'll just talk about that for one second and when people come filing in here. But um, if none of you know what cracky style hydroponics are, it's named after Dr. Bernard Cracky. And I'll put his link up there or down, down below. But if any of you guys ever looked into doing hydroponics, you kind of know that it's expensive and there's a, a whole learning curve that goes into it. And I got interested in it because I was on the road all the time and I was wanting to grow my own food. And uh, sometimes I would be gone for weeks at a time and I'd spend time, you know, Keely would go over and say, Hey, let's make a garden. I'd get out the tiller and we'd, we'd go through the whole thing with making a compost pile and tilling and 
and getting his garden going and it just looking beautiful. And then I'd be on the road and be gone for about four or five days and the irrigation went off and I'd come home and, and the whole thing would be just dead. And you'd be like heartbroken, you know, you put all that work into it. And I tried for years and years, so I was looking for something different. And when I found out about hydroponics, I got excited because I thought, you know, hey, that's why you can just have it pumped in and, and it'll keep running. And I did that for a few years, except there was a whole uh, mess of stuff that you had to get. It was really expensive when you start getting into all the meters and and um, the hydrogen, rock wool, just all the materials you have to get. And it didn't seem like it was a very cost effective uh, way to grow on a small scale. If you're doing it you know, commercially or you have a huge greenhouse and really growing a lot and maybe selling some, it might be cost effective. But um, just me growing some for my family, it really wasn't worth putting thousands of dollars into something right up front and to grow some leafy greens. Um, so I was looking for something else and I found Dr. Cracky's uh, hydroponics. And uh, he was in Hawaii. And the reason why they grew the way the what he was doing when he was trying to um, experiment with this is because in Hawaii, y'all know, I don't know if most of y'all know, but uh, groceries are really expensive. Um, some of the things that the processed foods and that to get shipped in cost like four times as much as what it does here. And so a lot of people that try to grow their own food and the problem, out, the problem out there is that there's a lot of rural areas and they're out in uh, volcanic areas and you really can't grow um, like you do in, in most of the places in the United States. So he was trying to come up with a different way because uh, there wasn't electricity everywhere. So that's when he was developing the, the off-grid hydroponics. So if y'all are interested in that, you always hear saying crack key hydroponics. Uh, it'd be pretty neat if y'all could maybe go look up and see Dr. Kratke, I put his uh, channel down in the description because it, he did all of this and he inspired a lot of people. And if you look it up on like YouTube, you'll see a whole lot of uh, different methods and people like experimenting and trying different ways, just like I am. And there's not a whole lot on Dr. Kratke himself. Uh, someone, Matt Garver, I don't know if he's here tonight, I'll look through the chat. Um, he kept up one of his original videos when Dr. Crack, he went and gave a speech somewhere. And um, then Dr. Crack, he like disappeared. I don't know what he did, maybe uh, retired or something. And he was gone for years. And this video kept playing. And a lot of people just took it in and tried different ways of growing. And anyway, Dr. Crack, he came back and started making some more videos. He, he opened up his, his own channel. And, and that's what's down, down below. But not a whole lot of people know about him. There's about I think he's got like 5,000 subscribers and he puts out a video like once a month or what's once every couple of months. But, you know, I just be, thought it'd be kind of cool if anybody's interested in that kind of growing that they go and see um, the guy who like started it all and kind of get a little insight. It's, it's really interesting. He did uh, um, just kind of like what we, we do, what you see on my channel, like this stuff up here, except he did it in just uh, bottles with little neck cups. But they also did things with like uh, ginger and, you know, out in uh, Hawaii, you know, it's real tropical and that. But they, they grew like these big, massive beds of ginger using the cracky method where they just put it in and, and had a little bit of water. Um, no pumps, no aeration. And when they got done, they'd lift up this gurney like you carry somebody who's hurt and it would just be full of ginger. So, um, like I said, he's really interested in that. I just wanted everybody to know because... A lot of times when I'm kind of trying to explain this thing and I say crack key hydroponics, everybody kind of looks at you, you know, kind of weird and you know what, you know, like crack or what, and, and they don't understand. So um, if anybody's, you know, interested in seeing where it all came from and, and the reason why we're growing like this, you can get a lot of insight from that. But uh, sorry that I'm not keeping up in, in the chat in that. Let me see. Does anybody have like any, any uh, questions of questions about it let's see Brad's here if y'all see hidden harvest grow lights Brad um, I'm gonna have him on one day and let him talk because I'm not really good at articulating what he does but he made up he made his own um, grow lights and it's full spectrum if, if you don't know plants don't need 
the entire spectrum if you know all the different colors of the rainbow plants don't need all of it and they need a certain for everyone to understand it's basically red and blue and and different amounts of those two and that's about all they need and the new led grow lights that you see coming out kind of have a purplish hue is because of that red and that blue anywho brad made a full spectrum led light i don't know how he went about doing it you you know you can chat with him he's right there and the, go follow him i think uh brad you're still here right hidden harvest grow lights and uh he made a full spectrum light and you can check his channel out and he's growing stuff in his um basement and he's got it set up with something called river ponics it's another hydroponic system but uh you can get in there and see all the stuff that he's grown it's really incredible because i know a lot of you have asked me if you can because you're up north if you could grow in a basement or if you could grow um in your garage or or spare bedroom and i'm here in florida so most of my growing is outside there's a few days that we have to come in maybe a couple of weeks but this year believe it or not there was like two days that we took sheets and just tossed it over everything and that was it so we don't really have a need to grow indoors but i know that a lot of you guys you know you're still getting snow in some place in the u.s um you might want to look in look into that with uh brad let me see if i can look over here real quick water is a premium who said that Mule Norton, Mule Norton, Central Texas. Water is a premium. Fortunately, we have rain barrels. Yeah, that's one thing. That's one reason why we grow like this too is because uh, we moved back here in the city and you have to pay for water. And they don't care if you're drinking it or flushing it down the toilet or shower or watering a garden. You get charged the same for usage and you get charged the same for sewage. So even though you might be putting tens of thousands of gallons out in the um, garden, you're still getting charged the, the wastewater too. And uh, so your water, your water bill gets kind of high. And also we have restrictions because when we go through droughts, we can only water on certain days. And you can only water at certain times and for certain amounts of hours. And some places get really strict and you can only water if your house is numbered even or numbered odd. So... You know, sometimes we're in places that it, it's not really um, uh, conducive. You, you can't, um, you're not allowed to water that much and then your garden just can't wait. You can't just, you know, sneak out and do it or, you know, have your neighbors calling on you. Let's see. We would later on, we would like to make a nutrient solution from scratch. We like to make a nutrient solution from scratch. Yeah, we can try that. If anybody... You know, this is all about experimenting. Uh, I learned a little bit, you know, what the, the stuff from Dr. Crack, you kind of like what I'm showing you all is just getting a nutrient solution and putting a plan in it. You know, there's some little basics, but all of this other stuff, you know, is just we're all just experimenting and seeing what works and what doesn't work. So a lot of you who have like sent me questions, uh, it doesn't work all the time and, and it doesn't work with all vegetables. Uh, you know, that's why I work with leafy greens. Uh, there is different ways you can work with di different um, produce, but leafy greens are the easiest, and that's why I'm trying to show everyone so everybody can get their, their feet wet and give it a try. But definitely, you know, we're all experimenting, and, and it's, you know, I, you can ask Keely there. Uh, we tried several things, you know, years ago, like seven or eight years ago when I first started. We tried several different things, and, you know, some things made it, some things didn't. Uh, some things, like people ask about root vegetables. We tried uh, turnips one year, and the way I did it, we actually formed a turnip, and it came out really well. Um, but then the next year, we couldn't do it, and then people keep asking about it. I've got beets out there. I'll put that in one of my uh, next videos. You know, it, it doesn't do really well uh, with beets, um, carrots, you know, anything like that. But who knows, somebody out there, you know, you guys, when you're testing and trying, you might put it a different way or take care of it you know, in a different manner than I did and, and come up with uh, uh, something that, that works. And then, you know, it'd be awesome if you guys could all share with it, everyone too. Um, thinking of doing a custom one. Are you, George? Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, there's... Uh, people, people haven't really told me that 
I'm allowed to share their stuff yet. I didn't ask because I didn't plan on doing all of this. I was just making a channel, kind of sharing with everyone. Um, but it, within the last couple of months, people have been sh uh, just sending me a lot of pictures. And it's not just, it doesn't look like just, you know, like a, a grow box or something that I've done. They've switched it up different ways and, and it's all looking pretty cool. Um, if you look at somebody on Instagram, Modern Arts, I think all small letters, uh, he, he makes like wood tables and things by hand, but uh, he started making one and he, and he put them up on a wall and he does his IG stories with it. And those look pretty cool, but you got to watch it when he, when he gets out there and does it because, you know, the stories disappear in 24 hours. But uh, there's been a lot of people that are doing it different ways and, and sending me pictures and it's all pretty cool. And let's see, have you done a video on how to start your seedlings? Um, I did about a year ago, uh, Springs here, and me and Keely are going to start some more uh, microgreens. Everything, almost everything, about 90% of the stuff that we use in all of our containers, we start them as microgreens. And the reason being is that you can take those and, and harvest some and, and throw them on your soups and salads and sandwiches and that. And at the same time, you can pull some out and transplant them into these containers, and those can start to grow to baby greens. And then, the same, then if your baby greens do all right, you can just eat the rest of the microgreens. But if you always have microgreens growing, then if this fails, or if you eat half of it, then you you can turn right around and grab some microgreens and pop them right back in and just keep your little harvest on a uh, consistent basis instead of what we usually do in a traditional garden is we get out there till up the ground, condition the soil, then we plant everything, and then you're over there waiting and it all comes in at once and, and you're trying to give it to the neighbors and eat it and can it, and then your season's done. Um, if you grow this one, you just keep your little transplants because, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, wondering if anyone knew it instead of Master Blend. Okay, yeah, I'll get to that pretty soon. Oh, Pepe's here. Hey, Pepe. Um, what do you call it? Forgot my train of thought there. But you always you always have your microgreens growing, and then that way uh, you always have something to put into these containers because the you can't depend on the nurseries or Home Depot or Lowe's or anything to, to constantly keep your vegetables, your transplants. So spring and fall they'll have some, but the rest of the time, like during the summer, they're not going to have any kind of lettuce or any kind of leafy greens. So you've got to keep your microgreens growing, and then every time you harvest one of these. You just go to your microgreens and pop those out and, and then you just keep it going and then that way you have leafy greens like all year long. Um, let's see. Keely said someone, Rachel. Let's see what Rachel is. Rachel was wondering if anyone found out, let's see, the UK. I'm not sure, Rachel, uh, Master Blend, what they were using. I know somebody said something about, I think, Australia. But... I'll go look back at the, the video that I was talking at. I think it was on the one that says, why so cheap? Um, and I asked people, uh, I haven't checked the comments lately. I'll go down there and check. Maybe I, you know, I'll try to make a list and every time someone tells me something from some part of the world, maybe we'll start compiling a list or we'll make a Google Doc somewhere and everyone can come in and kind of just put, you know, what they use because it's a uh, master blend. I know we use it here. There's a couple of places we can get it but you can't get it all over the place. But uh, if, if y'all are trying in other countries, hydroponics is basically used all around the world. Um, just find out what kind of hydroponic nutrients they use and you'll just have to experiment with it because this is a little different and just don't go overboard with the nutrients and, and give it a try. I would just start with like a couple, like two or three and you know a couple of micrograms and just give it a try at first and, and not do you know, like a whole garden and, and have it all fail. But um, uh, I'll try to compile a list or something because I know there's, there's been people asking and some people have said it's a couple of different nutrients, but I just can't remember them all right now. Um, let's see. Sorry if I'm missing questions, guys, because it's I'm not used to talking and reading and doing this. I'm building... Nancy, hello Nancy. I'm building a hydroponic greenhouse and aquaponics outside of it. Possibly an aeroponic wall inside the house. Well, that's a lot of stuff. That's awesome. 
That's uh, uh, people. People have asked me now too about aquaponics because what it kind of gets me a little, uh, a little hot under the collar when you see these these things like in the the store and they'll have a little fish tank with just one fish and 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 a plant on top and say, hey, here's tabletop aquaponics. And uh, there's a whole lot more that goes into it. You guys have really got to get hydroponics down first. And Nancy can probably tell you there's a there's a learning curve with aquaponics because um, fish and the plants they produce nitrates and nitrites and, and it's kind of difficult to explain. But when they're they eat and their poop breaks down, uh, if the plants aren't taking it up uh, fast enough, or if the plants are taking it up too fast and there's not enough fish, your your levels get off and your plants can die or your fish can die. And once it starts getting off like that too, it can happen like really fast. And there, there's all kind of calculations they go through for aquaponics that a little tabletop thing is not gonna do it. And just sticking some fish in there and throwing a plant on it's kind of careless because all of those are gonna fail sooner or later. Uh, Pam's Great Outdoors, hey, how are you doing? Nice of you to stop in. She's one of my neighbors somewhere close around here. Let's see. And Pepe, I know I saw you in there. Hello, I'm watching Wild Work. All right, cool. Y'all check out, you see up there, it says Pepe Fasos. Y'all want to learn about microgreens, go watch his channel. And go check him out on Instagram. I don't I don't know if it's five, is it 560 Farms? I'll go check that out. It's um, uh, I'm following him on Instagram, but he posts all the pictures of, he's actually a microgreen farmer in Australia. And he's just blows me away at the, the stuff that he's growing. If you guys really want to grow micro, basically my microgreens that I'm growing, I eat a little bit of them, but most of them's to put into um, my containers because I feel like if uh, if I buy some seeds, I can get a lot more out of this, uh, you know, just me and my wife personal use than I can if I'm buying a lot of microgreen seeds and just, just eating a lot of microgreens. But y'all go check out Pepe. He's like, he's awesome. He has a, a little business going there. And um, let me see who else is here. Yeah, and he's, he's just wild. It just blows me away at some of the pictures that he has. He's selling them in the market, uh, farmer's market, at the grocery stores. And uh, and he started selling to some restaurants. And, and he just started doing some uh, high-end restaurants. There you go. 560 Farms. I thought it was something like that. Go check that on a, on Instagram. You guys are going to be blown away by the pictures on there. It's my microgreens like nothing. Like I said, I grow I grow mine basically to to be doing this. He's actually growing microgreens and, and selling them. So that, that's pretty awesome. Let me see. George said, you got it. I would love to share green smoothie recipes. Oh, okay. Keely and I'm talking about green smoothies. Master blend the easiest way. To master blend is the easiest way to start. Yeah, Mickey, master blend is like by far just the easiest. I've tried a couple and the cheapest. Uh, I don't know. There might be some cheaper, but I mean, I when I first started, I just went up to the hydro shop, and they're wanting to sell you all these different part A, part B, part C, and you have to pour so much into a container. Um, and I did the floating raft system where you make you put a bunch of, of wood like a square and you filled it up with water and you put styrofoam on top and, and put your plants in the top. Maybe we'll do that. We'll do one of those in the next coming weeks. So you basically had, you know, gallons of water, like 50 gallons of water that you put the plants on top of. So you had to put a lot of nutrients into it. And those nutrients were expensive. We we're coming out with like little bottles that were like 30 or 40 bucks a piece. And so that on top of the net cups and hydrogen and everything else, you were like, wow, you know, how much am I spending, you know, to grow some lettuce? But the master blend, I ordered a, I think, 25 pound bag about six or seven years ago now. And I still have maybe like five or seven pounds of it left. Um, I bought three bags at five, five pounds a piece, calcium nitrate. And, and then the Epsom salt you just buy up at the store, you all know that's cheap. But just taking those, and I mean, it stores really well. You just mix it up, water soluble. And uh, uh, I haven't had really any problem with it. The other ones, you had to be really careful mixing them, and they would coagulate. 
if you mixed them wrong and they, they clump up and sink and then the, the plants kind of absorb them. There's all kinds of things that happen. And when we got the master blend and I started using it, it was just really, really simple. Sorry, Miracle Grow. Somebody was asking about Miracle Grow. I'm a new subscriber to your channel. Really appreciate you sharing. Cool, appreciate, appreciate you subscribing. Plenty of ideas. Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff to do, and we got a lot of stuff planned for this this spring too. Somebody was asking about Miracle Grow. If you do Miracle Grow, they have something called an Aero Garden. I don't know if y'all saw the commercials. That's like the little tabletop one with the the little grow light up on top. And those do pretty good. I think Brad's doing, uh, from Hidden Harvest Grow Light, is doing a side-by-side -side comparison with his light and, and that grow light on there. But if you do try to use Aero Garden, I, I did it and it was in one of my videos. That seemed to look, work all right. I did it once in one of these small containers last year. And I tried again, but you have to use the one that's hydroponic nutrients. Here's why. Um, when you grow in soil, there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on besides just NPK, your, your nitrogen, your phosphorus. Um, potassium the, the it's living when you hear the, the term living soil there's all kind of microbes and everything eating and breaking stuff down and they form all different kind of minerals and compounds that's why growing in soil is it's literally the best and like I said just because we do this I'm not saying this is the best way to go uh, it's the easiest it's what works for me but growing in soil is the best you know at any time if you can do it and you have the space you know not all of us have a garden a, a backyard to use and not all of us we're getting older we can't crawl around on our hands and knees and and um you know uh weed and till and 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 do everything so this makes it a lot easier but in your soil all of those micronutrients besides your npk there's there's hundreds and thousands of different compounds that the plants need um trace amounts of it's not a lot like they don't need like they need a lot of nitrogen these are trace amounts that they, they don't need a whole lot of, but they still need us like you with your multivitamins. And everybody knows we're taking A, B, C, D, E and that, but there's a whole lot of other things that we need, but we don't need like a lot of it. And all of that stuff is inside of the, the soil. Now, when you go get something uh, like traditional fertilizer, they basically give you NPK. And that's because your your living soil is already there. Those trace elements are all down in there. So you're giving it the, the three main things that it needs. And that's why sometimes you have to go by and, you know, put in like blood meal or azomite and different things to kind of compensate for your soil. But once your soil is conditioned right, you get NPK. Now, if you take that and you just try to put it into water, you're missing out on all those thousands of different compounds. So some of the hydroponic nutrients in that will have them in it and I don't know how much of the master blend I have to check in all that because I thought the master blend was just basically NPK um, but when you get into like miracle Grow and some of these other uh, cheaper fertilizers uh, they give you different amounts of NPK but really all of that other stuff is missing and I found that it doesn't work well uh, organic fertilizer something everybody asks about all the time too uh, when, when it goes into non-circulating system like this, where unless you have a bubbler or something to aerate the water, when it just sits sooner or later, things start to grow, forms a little ecosystem in there, kind of like in the soil, but it's in the water, it's wet and moist all the time. And then it just starts to smell and then everything goes bad. Then things start getting out of balance and dying and, and it doesn't hardly ever end well. So I don't know if that's probably too long of an answer, but whoever was asking about like, you know, like miracle Grow and different, different things. If you use miracle Grow, use the one that they made for their arrow garden that sits on the, the tabletop, because those are taking into account that it's not getting all of the stuff for soil. So I think there's a little bit more in it than just the NPK. Um, but I know a few years back, me and, I, and some other people have tried just the plain, the blue stuff, the miracle Grow stuff you use in your garden, and it really didn't work well. Um, and that's for growing out your baby greens and that, you know, microgreens, you can put a tad of fertilizer in it to help it out. But if you put too much, you're going to burn them. Uh, so you don't really need fertilizer or, you know, even the master blend or anything like that. If you're just growing out microgreens, and especially if you're doing it in soil and a little tray. Um, so you don't need very much So what you do need, 
for your baby greens, you know, once they get to this stage, you know, is when you need all that other stuff. Let me see. Keely said, Matthias is asking, how do you start your seeds to prepare them for hydro? Okay, let us, um, if you saw some of my videos with, well, this one's got a frog on it. Let me pop it out of there. Y'all have seen these? Now, you don't have to use this. That's just what I found at the dollar store. And basically, I was using these because they're readily available. They had a deep lid that I could, you know, turn one over and put some soil if I needed to put them on top of each other. But I was basically selling these. When I first started doing this, I had a shop. And I was just um, telling people how to do this. And then there's a lot of people who, who didn't have the time to make it or, or couldn't find it. So they were like, you know, could I get one from you? So I was doing using these containers because I could find them easy. They're really easy to just cut. But um, I've been using this for years and it's just I've gotten used to it. So you don't have to use something like this. It just worked for me because that's a good amount, you know, like a 5x5 five five, uh, grow pad fits on there. That's enough microgreens for me if I'm going to grow like uh, radish, um, all your different spicy microgreens that, you know, you wouldn't want a 10, 20 tray of if you're not selling it or you're not giving it away. Uh, I found like all the spicy ones, the mustard and radish and things like that. I wouldn't eat a whole lot of them. So I grow a lot of these. And if it's going to be something like pak choy, I have two or three of these going or, or I'll do one week and one another week and another week, a couple of weeks later. That way, if we do eat it, that we've got some more to go into these guys later. But I start almost all of my stuff like this, either with the grow pad, and I've got a couple of videos. Um, you know, if you want to check out the other videos we got, um, or I'll do it where I put the soil, the lid on top of here. And the reason why I do that and it wicks up is because I'm still gone. Like I said, if I was here every day, maybe in a little while when I retire and I get to stay home, I would enjoy waking up in the morning, going out with my cup of coffee and, and checking everything and then watering everybody. But um, sometimes I just have to leave before the sun even gets up. And, you know, I, I can't um, take the time to do all of that. But all of my seeds, basically, I start them as microgreens. because And, and that's what I grow, too, stuff that I can eat as microgreens because then I have something to eat. If you're using it for garnish or, or you know, like a little salad or or you want a little extra spicy stuff on your sandwiches. But then I take those and then I can plant them out. So nothing really goes to waste. The only thing that, let's see, shard, let's see, Swiss shard, those, you know, those are like big plants. And those, those take a little more. And any of the seeds that are like really thick, you're going to have to put in soil. So I put, I put some of those in a maybe in a 10 20 tray and and plant those out because i'm not gonna grow a whole lot of shard you know i can eat some shard microgreens but the they're pretty and i but i don't have that much difference in flavor from some of the other greens that i get so it's cheaper for me to grow a bunch of pak choy microgreens and that's why you see a bunch of pak choy and also i let all my pak choy go to seed like five years ago and i just had about 40 plants and I saved all the seed and I've been using it ever since so that's free and if you you guys know if you go and buy like Swiss chard um, the the different seeds that are a lot bigger they're a little more expensive you know than if you're getting like a, well amaranth is kind of expensive but but they're real tiny seeds and you can put a lot of them out there and grow a lot of plants uh, the bigger seeds are a little little tougher let's see yeah, miss anything, Keely? I have to go back through here and start at, uh, checking. Yeah, sorry guys, this uh, I wasn't expecting all of this going on here. I've heard them last up to three weeks refrigerated. You paint all your plastic containers to block the sun. Uh, no, I don't, George. I don't. He, George asked if I paint all my plastic containers to block the sun. The larger ones, I try to get uh dark and if it's going to be sitting in the sun i'll paint it out white and what we're going to try and do this year is we've got the shallow ones if you saw me change out one in one of the previous videos uh we're going to try and just bury that a little bit and see if that that keeps it cooler so if you get the dark one that that keeps the sun out then you don't have to bother trying to paint it um these guys 
I grow microgreens in these, so they're not going to be in here too much more than two weeks. Uh, so if it starts to grow algae, and that maybe during the heat of the summer, you know, it might grow algae re really quick. But usually by the time this starts to go bad, I don't even end up refilling it. You know, when you fill this up and it's wicking it up, usually your microgreens are ready to go. Um, so I don't bother painting those out because it, uh, by the time any algae starts to grow, I'm all, already cleaning them out and, and switching them over again. Um, if something's about maybe like this size. But now see, we do Keeley, you know, put a little box around that one and that keeps the light out there. But things that are about this size, you know, if there's not going to be a box on it, you know, then that and that's clear. You know, I'll go ahead and paint that black and then I'll paint it white again. And then Keeley put like flowers and things on it like that. But, but something about that big, you would want to paint something like that out. Down. All right, let me see if I missed anyone else. I've heard they can last up to three weeks refrigerated. Your uh, microgreens, the, pretty much they can. It's, uh, that's what uh, I was amazed because we were going to uh, farmer's markets and some grocery stores are carrying it right now, like Whole Foods, but there's no telling how far it's come, you know, when somebody did harvest it. Like, like Pepe, I know he does his really quick and gets them out there. And um, the grocery stores up here, some of the far the people at the farmer's market, uh, if they're packaged up already, you know, hopefully they're doing it that day. But I found that when we brought them home, you know, within three or four days, they're like already going bad. And uh, I think if you go watch Pepe's channel, you'll see why he takes extra precaution and he, he does things. He's, he learned a couple of tips and tricks that, that he does to uh, prolong the life of the microgreens. And, uh, but I found like even mine at home, if I take them and, and they're going to get too big because they'll go from baby green, they'll go from microgreen to baby green, like really fast. Um, and if you want them at the microgreen stage, you can harvest it and they will last in the refrigerator a couple of weeks. Uh, it depends, you know, it's just the way, the way you, you know, I put them loose in a container and, um, don't pack them too tight and don't put them like all the way in the back of the refrigerator where it's really cold and, and mine have lasted pre pretty good. Let's see, Keeley has been busy. Do you paint all your plastic containers? I've heard. Found some carry-out style trays from the grocery store. Yeah. Um, let's see, Mule Norton. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. You said you're, you've got some plastic style grocery trays. Uh, let me know how that goes. And if you guys can share anything, like I said, if you want me to share it or join the Facebook group, it's Keep On Growing. I think I put a link down there. And if I, if I didn't, I will later. Um, yeah, but please share share your uh, pictures. We we saved a couple. We did that a couple years back, and like I said, I started selling them, so I couldn't sell the little takeout containers. You know that we were we went and had lunch and, and did it, so that's why we went and looked for something else. But um, we've saved a couple because it's after we were doing this, we're eating out like a like the last couple weeks. We went out a couple times, and we're when we ate, we we're like you know it seems like a shame to throw this away it looks just like one of our containers that we're using at home so if anything when you go out to all these places and you get a to-go train they have that black bottom you can always save those too and then when you start your microgreens you see me put a black tray on top of it and that's just one of the ramen my kid had like eight tons of ramen so uh we saved all those black bowls and they fit right over the five by five um grow pad so we had you know a bunch of those for free so we don't have to buy anything so i never look for an alternative for it and people are always saying you know what's that black tray you put on there i'm like just the you know the thing the little ramen the soup comes in any anything that you can find like that is you know is awesome and if like I said you're going to get the takeout trays those are about the same you know they come in all different sizes and shapes but um that's another thing you can use them for instead of just you know making a box and a grow box when you plant out your microgreens you have to uh, keep them in the dark for the first couple of uh, three or four days. Those work really well. Oh, CB's here. Man, I'm missing every. I feel bad. I'm gonna have a couple of these, maybe maybe next week, maybe every Sunday or something. I'll, I'll have a couple, and if I miss you guys, you know, just holler at me on Twitter or or the Facebook group or somewhere, and just ask your question, and and uh, you know. Uh, 
let me know you were in here and, and uh, I'm really sorry if I missed you. I'm a new subscriber, really enjoying your content. Um, I am PJ55 Freedom. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. CB, this man makes the most awesome videos. Simple way to grow. Thanks. Thanks, CB. Y'all check out, that's another grower over there. Now, y'all go check out CB's garden, uh, CB's greenhouse and garden. He's in the chat. Um, he's just about to get his stuff rolling. The, the cold weather is just about to stop up there. But he's got a bunch of straw bale gardens, if y'all are interested in that. And he's got some hydroponics. He's got a greenhouse, and he's going to set it up, and they're going to grow a bunch of peppers. And that's going to be just an awesome I, I, I'm, I'm just waiting to see that. I don't have a whole lot of peppers. I grew a couple. And uh, we're going to try and grow some more because, it's, I mean, that's another thing besides leafy greens. If you just walk outside, instead of trying to keep peppers in your icebox, and then if you use them or you don't use them or half of them go bad, you end up throwing them away. And, and I, to me, it's just like throwing money in the garbage or, or in the compost pile. It's just put, putting money in your compost pile. Um, it's just awesome to have pepper plants and stuff outside. If you can do tomatoes, you know, if you can have your produce outside, I mean, it's just, just awesome to walk outside and grab you, you know, if you're going to have a little soup and grab some kale and stuff and throw it in or pak choy and chop it up and it's just fresh and you don't have to go rummaging through the refrigerator to see what you have. You just go out there and pick what you want and, and use it. It's just, it's just awesome. But yeah, y'all go check out CB's garden. He's going to have a, a bunch of peppers going on uh, pretty soon here. And it's just with hydroponics. Let's see. Perfect. Pepe. Thanks, Pepe. Becky D. The Rockwell cubes fit nicely into the K-Cups. Oh, cool. So some people are using the K-Cups. I, I thought about that a lot, too, when, when I went to a, a friend's house and they, they had the Craig coffee. And and I noticed that, you know, you, you make a cup of coffee and then you end up taking that little plastic cup and throwing it in the garbage. And if people are going through, like, maybe six or seven cups a day and, and you're just tossing them away, and then you're going out to the store and buying a little plastic cup to do your hydroponics and it seems kind of funny. So let me know how that works. I don't have a K-cup machine or anything, and I, I know a couple of people that used it, but I don't want to go up there and ask them for their, their used uh, coffee pucks. Let's see. Rachel asks, what's a K-cup? A K-cup is, we've got, uh, I don't know if you've seen the, the um, automated coffee machines, like they had Mr. Coffee with just a little coffee pot. Now they have specialized cups. They're little plastic cups. They look like a little tiny two ounce Dixie cup that's covered and it's got coffee in it. And you place it in this, this coffee machine and push a button and it makes all these different flavors. Uh, I've never got one because I don't really care for too many of the flavors that they have. I drink straight up black coffee. Um, you know, French vanilla, they've got like hundreds of flavors. Um, but, but it's got a little cup, looks like a tiny little mouthwash cup and it's got coffee in it and you, and it's a single use thing. You put it in, pop it in, and then you take it and you throw it out. And you know, it does seem kind of ridiculous. They, they have the reusable one that you can use with just ground coffee. But if you want all those different flavors, you have to buy boxes and they're like, I mean, 10 or 12 bucks for uh, a box of coffee or Dunkin' Donuts coffee or whatever it is. And you use them, there's like 18 cups in there, and then you they end up in the trash. Let's see. One pepper, one tomato, both of hydro. Oh, cool. Oh, you're going to have two. Oh, CB, you're going to have two of them going. Awesome. Yeah, y'all check out his channel. I've been watching that one. What medium do you germinate seeds in? Let's see. Most of my seeds, let's see. Uh, most of them I'll do on a grow pad. Uh, just because it's easier for me to that they're they're just about the size I like to take them and put them into the, the little pool noodle and they're easy to get out that that grow pad just comes apart and disintegrates um, soil is the best if you don't mind getting a little soil but when when I use the the grow pad uh, it seems like it's really fast I just put it on top of that wick toss your seeds on cover it up you know, and then in a couple of days, you know, it's it's long enough to get out in the sun. And then about a week later, I'm already putting them into these containers. Uh, if you don't mind getting your hands dirty, you want to do a little soil, I've done that. And I've done some with hydrogen, like the pak choy works really well. If you can get your hydrogen, hydrogen where it uh, stays wet a little bit, 
Uh, if you look back, I've got a video from like about a year ago, but I put a cement tub on top of a old aquarium and put a little fountain pump that, you know, it costs like 15 bucks or something. It, it only, it could only pump up two feet was, was the, how high, you know, your pumps say it can pump two feet or four feet or six feet. This was one of the little two foot ones. So I got a little 10 gallon tank and set the cement tub and some hydrogen. And I just had it pump in there and had a hole out the bottom and it would just run in and the hydrogen would stay kind of moist, but the top would stay dry. I had that thing like running all the time. And whenever I needed pak choy, I would just grab like a teaspoon and just sprinkle it in there and just walk away. And weeks later, there'd be little sprouts. And I think I have a video on it. And you go over and you pull it up and most of the hydrogen just falls right off because it's so big and it's nice clean roots no soil at all it, it, it was pretty awesome so i might set something like that up again this year too um the reason why we we don't have that much we just moved here a year ago we were living at our last place for about five years and that's when i had a lot of time to to experiment and try different things and and we had to pack up and when we moved we didn't bring everything with us so we're basically starting over. So we're, we're going to get back in. We've got all kind of ideas uh, to do other things that we, we haven't done for a few years. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of fun. Let's see. Keely. Mark wants to know, do you put the microgreens directly into the nutrients when they're ready to transfer in the noodle? Or do you dilute the fertilizers at first? Most, you can cut them down. Um, Mark, uh, I think the, the formula I've been giving everybody was the 12 grams, 12 grams, and 6 grams of the, the master blend of calcium nitrate to Epsom salt uh, per 5 gallons of water. And for leafy greens, sometimes I cut that down to 10, 10, and 5. And I find that that's done all right with almost everything I, I do. But if, you, if you, you start them off like that and and your plants are too tender or, or for some other, other reason. So you might live in a different environment too. They might have be struggling from, from different humidity or different uh, lighting and, and different like wind and, and sun and everything. But if you, you try to put them in and they seem like, you know, it's a little too harsh, you can always back it off a little because when they're small, most of their energy is coming from the first little leaves. It's called a cotyledon, I think. So they, most of their energy is coming from that. And it's when the first set of true leaves, the leaves that actually look like the, the leaf of the plant comes out is when it starts to make its own food with uh, the sun and that's when it needs nutrients. Um, so you can start it off like that. But like I said, me personally, I'm on the road all the time or, or back and forth and, and I've got different things growing in different succession. I would have to try and keep track of what nutrients and what levels are in which containers and then as the plants grew, which ones I had to switch out or add more nutrients. And to me, I just tried, you know, you, you can call me lazy or, or what, but it, I, what little time I do have to work in my garden, I don't want to be doing a whole lot of math in my head or looking over charts. I try to do it as simple as possible. So I go ahead and just mix up that formula and I use it. And if everything's going all right, you know, it's fine. If it looks like you know, some of the plants might have a little tip burn or something. I might cut it back with just, just, you know, adding a little fresh water in with it too and diluting it a little. Um, it just comes from doing it, you know, experience. There's, there's no one exact science to, to get everything right. If you want to do that, then, then you, you move on up to like traditional hydroponics and you have to get your meters. And there's nothing wrong with all of this, you know, that why I'm not using it, but you have to get your meters to, to measure how much nutrients you have in there. But then you're going to have to measure your pH too, because your, your, your pH gets off and it can cause your plants not to soak up the nutrients that it needs. There, there's a whole host of things that can go on. So I like to try to keep things as simple as possible because there, all those videos are out there. If you guys want to learn traditional hydroponics, there's a ton of people out there. And when I first started getting into this, I watched them. I watched hours and hours and hours and, and it was just someone standing here, you know, going over a chart or just telling you something. It was like being in school again. And after days and weeks and, you know, just trying to learn all of it, uh, I knew that most people can't do it. And I wanted to develop something that, that, you know, someone like my parents could just get a container, put some nutrient solutions, stick a plan in and call it done. So that, 
I know when you guys ask a question, I probably ramble on and then go off on a tangent. But you're probably asking, you were asking about, you know, when it first you first put the the plants in. You can cut it back a little. I don't. Like I said, if if everything works out, it does. And and uh, so far this year, everything everything's worked with with that um, same amount of nutrients from from beginning to harvest. Let me see. Now my chat, I'm way behind. So I'm sorry if anybody. I mean, if you really need me to answer something. And, and the chat keeps flying by, just a ask again or, or do it in capital letters or whatever everyone does here. Um, and ask Keely, you know, get Keely's attention. She'll, she'll kind of highlight it for me so I can come back and check them. Let's see, Hector, let us know how it goes. Post pictures. Okay, cool. Yeah, Hector's going to be in there. Great first stream, George. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for for coming by. I'm just I'm still just hanging out. Like I said, this is real informal. I haven't got everything set up, and y'all notice even when I did the turned on the stream, and it said countdown three, two, one, and when it hit zero, it it reset to thirty three or something, and and I had a couple of things set up. So I'm still learning all of this. If you guys bear with me, I don't mind coming on here and just kind of going over things with y'all. Um, but uh, these first couple of live streams are going to be a little rough. That's why I didn't invite anybody on. There's there's people on there like like Pepe's in here, um, Kang Star. If you guys are into any of this growing, I learned a lot from Kang Star, uh, and he said he'd like to be in one. That that'd be fun. Uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, Marty's Garden. Um, like I said, and these other guys who are right in our stream right now, Hidden Harvest Grow Lights, CB. You know all of these guys. When I get this down pat where I know how to have a stream going and people come on and then I'll have a guest on and you can, like I said, you can pick their brains too because uh, I've learned a lot of stuff from all of these guys. You know, it's not like I went to school and took a course on hydroponics and then just tried to figure out stuff by myself. I studied. I watched hours and hours of, of some of these uh, guys and, and I'm, I'm still like friends and talking with them every every week. Um when they put out videos and that. So uh, I think that'd be cool. If you guys would like that, you know, just have someone else on here and you, you can pick their brains. Like I said, it's, uh, um, I'm experimenting. I don't know everything. I'm not an expert. And all of these people here would just be, it'd be awesome to have them on and, and get to know a little bit of their knowledge too. I see Keely said, Rachel wants to know, does it shock the plants badly to start in soil and put them in a hydro system? Uh, in my experience, most of them know the, uh, it can, and some, if you let them get too big and they're kind of set in the ways, like the, if you look back, I just did those tomatoes, you know, the first couple of days they're, they're not doing really well. Cause you, you do shock them. Um, most of them, if you're getting them as transplants where they're only like two or three, kind of about this size up here. Uh, if you get those from home Depot and you rinse off the roots, you saw the videos I did that that doesn't it might take a day or two you guys might come out and maybe i'll show it in a video uh you know try not to make my videos too long but i i could kind of show them but the next day it might take a couple of days where they're they're like drooping and and looking like they're they're not really doing well and then when the sun goes down and they kind of pet back up and and it might take a few days so um that might be you know a little bit of the shock but you know, uh, it's either that or grow them right from hydro, right from the beginning. And I do that most of the time. And then when I see the transplants at Home Depot and Walmart and all those stores and nurseries, I get a little excited because that saves me a couple of weeks, you know, that I'm not growing a transplant. And I run out and that's why I did the lettuce. And I said this, we're going to do our whole wall again because we ate all of that. We're going to plant lettuce out again because it's still cool. And I know in a couple of weeks, none of the stores are going to have lettuce over here. I mean, we, we walked in Lowe's a few weeks ago and, and, you know, it's supposed to be winter time, but then we shot up to like 84 and they didn't water the plants. We went in and there was like just aisles of lettuce and it was all dead, just dead as could be. That was like heartbreaking. You know, the, the, that was the time when we were supposed to go get the stuff, save us some time and come home and plant it. And we walked in and it's just like all, all the plants were all dead. That was just crazy. But uh, let's see. Yeah, Oklahoma gets really hot, Joe. Joe comment, Oklahoma gets really hot in the summer and will the heat mess with the system? 
Okay, yeah, and then I'm gonna, let's see, I got another question from uh, Mule, one second here. The heat, everybody's asking about these things. Now, if you take something like that and set it out in the sun all day long, it'll heat up and your roots will get warm and your plants will die. So you can't, what I do is most of my stuff, I give like, uh, during the winter, it's a little bit different, but during the summer, I give them as much morning sun as I can get. As soon as the sun's coming up, if you can situate it somewhere as soon as the sun's coming up, go ahead and get some morning sun. And then if it's really hot during the day, give it shade and the nutrient level. Some people, because they, they leave it in there for weeks, they get excited, they're like, oh, I don't have to do anything. And they'll let that nutrient level you know, drop from here and drop all the way down. And then all of a sudden the plants are drooping over and dead, you know, and, and, and then they're wanting to fill it back up. If you go on over and you just kind of keep it in between here, half and three quarters, and you don't have to do that every day. It depends on how big your plants are, and it depends on how hot it is where you're at. But if you kind of keep it at that level, uh, the more water, the more nutrient solution that's in there, it takes longer for it to warm up. If you let it go down to like a half of an inch of water, you know it's not going to take any time for that to warm up. So, so try to give it early morning sun, shade the rest of the day, try to keep the nutrient level up. If you guys are home, like I said, I, I do this is because I'm on the road a lot. Some of you guys are home like every day. So, so don't let that nutrient level just drop and bring it back up. If you can kind of keep it up in there, uh, that's best. And if it gets really hot, we're going to, we're going to try and build some containers like, you know, like this to kind of shield that right there and have the plants. We're going to do a couple different things this year too. And if you guys come up with any ideas, um, we might build a box maybe put insulation and then a piece of wood so it looks decorative and it looks nice and then it's a little insulated too so it's just different ideas but mine when I have them like that uh, I don't sit them like it's summertime just right out in the middle of the sun and let them sit there all day they they just won't make it uh, also this is a three by four inch downspout and it's really thick and that keeps out the light and um, all of the lettuce that I just redid, there wasn't a bit of algae in any of that. And I know it's still winter time in that, but uh, usually if you have a clear container, there'll, there'll be some kind of algae growing. And with these thick ones, I haven't had a problem. Now, if you go get the two by three, the smaller one, it's a couple of problems with that. And I started with that because they're cheaper. Um, what happens is they're thinner so the light gets through them and you get algae a whole lot faster there's not as much nutrient solution in it so it goes down faster and there's not as much weight it's not as big it's it's a little smaller so when your plants only get like about six inches high and you have a whole trough full of them the wind can blow and knock it over and this it takes a lot of wind to knock that over um so i use a three by four and that helps with the, the heat y'all were talking about because you have a whole lot more water in there. And the little two by threes, those will heat up really fast out in the sun too. Um, I'm rolling over your Instagram page, Jeff. Cool. Yeah, you guys all meet each other in that because a lot of you guys that are in here in this chat, um, some of you, hey, Mitt and Dad, Eric, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. Um, a lot of you guys, some of some of the my garden peeps that we all know each other and we, we visit each other's page who, who make videos, we all know each other. But a lot of you, you other um, people that are in here, the only time we've interacted is like with me and you and, and you really haven't met each other. So you guys meet each other in the chat. There's a whole bunch of just like great gardeners in there and then they've got just cool channels. And, and like I said, that's where I've, I learned a lot of my stuff. There's someone, if you, you all watch, I don't know if you know Marty's Garden from Australia. Um, he's still out there. He's making his own compost, and, and he's, he's putting out videos. I, I watched this guy like over, I think it was about eight years ago, like when I first started, and he, he was making videos, and he's one of them that I was like watching way back then, and, and it's pretty cool that now, um, while I'm doing this, you know, I started talking with him. I think it was through Pepe and and Brent and a couple of them and and I was talking with Marty then I got associated with Marty and that was pretty cool because he's one of the guys I looked up to and, and watched I think like microgreens and that 
like seven or eight years ago, and, and that's why I said I like I love the internet, and that's why I like sharing what I do with with all of y'all, and and because it's just like a fantastic tool that we have. That there, there's no way that I would learn near what I have trying to go to the library or looking stuff up. Um, and there's no way that I could even share, uh, the, the, it, it's just a fantastic thing right now. It just blows my mind away that I get people on the other side of it, like Pepe's in Australia too, with Marty, uh, people in the UK and, and I get somebody from Egypt or Africa, like saying, you know, Hey, we're growing this way, you know, uh, or we're going back home and we're taking what we learned and, and going to do it there too. It's just, it, you know, it just blows my mind every day. It's uh, all these comments come in from these different places that I don't mind. That's why I like coming and sharing with you guys because you guys are doing that too and you guys are taking that information and passing on it, it whether you're just pushing the share button and just sharing it in a, a Facebook group or or Instagram or whatever, you know, whatever. Um, or you're actually telling somebody or showing somebody and, and some people have started growing this way too and uh, made it their own way and then they're telling somebody else or they, they have a page and they're making videos. So just this whole thing of using the internet for this is, like I said, I know I talk about it in my videos sometimes, but, but it's just because it really does just blow my mind every day. It's, it's just incredible. Um, let's see. Thank you, Keely. Here goes one. George, how hot has your outside water container reached when it is too hot to plants to die? My main concern. Uh, George, I don't let it get hot if it even feels like kind of warm. Your roots are going to die. It needs to pretty much stay cool. That's why I give it like early morning sun because it's cooled off over overnight. And if you like just let it get warm or hot, the, the roots aren't going to like it. I, at least in my experiment, I try to keep it as cool as possible. That's why we're going to try some of these containers. Uh, they block out the sun. They're gray. And, and you saw me growing lettuce on it last year. Um, we're going to bury it a little and see if that, that works because I actually did that four or five years back when I first started with the floating raft systems. All the videos were saying, you know, go get a piece of plywood and, and, and build a frame and, and plastic and, and put it up on cinder blocks and, and all of this. And, you know, my brain's just going ka-ching, 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 you know, all the stuff I have to buy. Well, me, I went out and bought some styrofoam that you have to use for the raft. And I, I dug a hole. I dug a ditch about two feet deep, one foot wide you know, out where somebody's not going to step in it. You know, there was only a couple of us there. We knew, knew what it was, but I dug a ditch and put plastic in it and filled it up with water and nutrients and stuck that styrofoam on top. And, uh, you know, it worked. That's where I got all this pak choy seeds from. Like I said, you guys have seen, you know, I have a little red container and all these pak choy, this pak choy that you've seen me growing from here all the way back through my videos came from that very first batch back before I started making videos. And I still have some. So uh, this last year, I've, I saved some of the seed and it's hanging up in the, the washroom right now. But it's because I'm getting a little low, but it's lasted about five five years. Um, let's see. Yeah, so basically, as cool as you can keep it, you know, like I said, if it, that, uh, one, one thing too, I don't know if anybody's asked, George, how hot is the outside water container? Okay, I was answering that. Um, one thing too is like the plastic, like we said, we're going to try, I ordered a NFT, a food grade one, but some people are asking about the plastic and there's a whole debate and, and I don't want to really go into that. You know, maybe one day we'll get on here and just talk about that all day long back and forth, but there's like really no, um, somebody that I know was talking to a chemist or somebody that makes the plastics and that. And he says that basically it has to get up over 140 degrees. For it to leach the the things that um, is it phthalates or ben, benzene or, or something, but but the thing in it that's toxic, it needs to get up over 140 degrees before it leaches it, and that's why in food grade plastics too, they use less. It's called a plasticizer that they use, and that's what makes um, plastic kind of stretchy or, or bendable. And food grade containers, they use less of that. Um, and it has to be heated up before it can uh, uh, degrade like that. So he, he's the one you see jumping in all the time when people are like, oh, I like this, but you know, I don't like plastic. 
and or the ones that just come on and go that's toxic you're gonna die you know he'll come on and try to explain it but then you know after a while they don't so if people are concerned about it the, there's no way we let our plant if, if your water's getting up to 100 degrees your plants aren't gonna last you know, there's no way it's going to get near 140 with your water getting that hot, much less your plants just being at 140 degrees anyway. So it's, it, to me, I'm not that concerned and that's why we use these. But if you are, like I said, I want to do, I want to help everyone. So we got food grade ones. And even though those are food grade, still going to do the same. You know, I won't set those out in the sun. I'll still have them shaded. And, and then what we're going to do too is try to make something like we made the marble grow box. That was pretty cool. I thought that was neat. You know, people, when you have this little, it, it's real easy for people to dismiss each other and say, you know, uh, you know, well, you're wrong or you're wrong. And, and you know, uh, I like to try and accommodate people because whatever fear they have or whatever concerns they have, it, it's real. It doesn't matter where they get their information from and whether it's right or wrong, it, it's a feeling. And so if they are genuinely concerned about something, I like to try and try and help them out. So that's why we made that one out of marble and I just cleaned it out and that thing looks awesome. It was less than 10 bucks to make. I'm going to make some more of them and I've got it out there. It's cleaned out. I'm going to put some lettuce and put something else in it because uh, the, the bad thing that we're not supposed to grow, the, the water spinach, um, that's a whole nother story. Uh, it was in that little tiny grow box and the table was like covered with water spinach. That stuff just like was growing in that little container grew all year and people were telling me, oh, you can't do it. The marble is going to mess with the pH and it's going to mess this up and you can't. And and that's why I like doing all of this stuff is people can say you can't do it. It's just you're showing results. You go, well, you know, it grew. You know, I got a whole garden full of stuff, you know. Um, so we're going to try different things. We're going to grow in glass. One thing you don't want to use too much glass is because you're out in the garden, you might break it. But, but if you're concerned about plastic, we're going to grow in glass. Um, we're going to make, like I said, we, we started on different containers, so we've got all kind of ideas to come up. It's going to help everybody and it's just going to be fun. And, uh, you know, then everybody has their choice and, and which way they want to grow and we don't have to argue anymore. We can all just go our own ways and do, do our own thing. All right. Uh, sorry, I probably missed like a million questions in here. I got downspout veggies going inside and soon we'll have more outside. Groundhog Peggy, Groundhog Peggy, Groundhog Peggy, sorry, I can't see, I've got a glare on the screen, I'll be able to set all this up a little better next time, but um, can't see, that's awesome, that's cool, like I said, if y'all join our uh, Keep On Growing group on uh, Facebook, uh, I I think i got a link down below, if not, I'll put it, I'll find it somewhere, y'all will find it, we'll find each other, but get in there, and post your pictures, like I said, I've got some people have been doing this and doing, doing it different ways, one guy took a instead of getting pool noodles which the pool noodle when you cut it up it ends up being about two cents a piece if you get the pool noodle for a dollar you know even if you get it for four dollars you know you're talking about eight cents or something um but instead of buying that as cheap as it was he he had the holes in the downspout and he took tape like green painters tape or something just rolled it down the middle and it just poked a hole in the tape and took the plants and put them a little foam and stuck the plants in there um in india now this is where i get a lot of my uh information and 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 i learn a lot of stuff it's just watching on youtube and and uh researching things but in different countries around the world hydro is getting really really common because they're they have really bad grown conditions um droughts and things like that and they're able to to take a controlled environment and, and grow produce instead of having it shipped in and having an extremely high price they can grow it right there so, so hydroponics are getting uh, more popular but they're trying to feed people in, in poor sections of the countries and that so they're trying to do it it was what some of us call like gorilla hydroponics or off-grid what we're doing so there's a lot of people around the world that are trying to grow this way out of necessity you know it's not because they want to you know it, it, if 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 I could, if I was just doing it as a hobby, like some people say, oh, that's that doesn't feed your family. It's just a hobby. If I was just doing it as a hobby, I would go out and just buy all the the pumps and aeration and the meters and and do that. Uh, but then I, you know, some of you people out there, if I shared it with you, not everyone can do that. So you know, what good good would that do? And you know, those videos are out there. 
but if we're you know growing this way so that everyone gets a chance to to experience something because it's just something good to know even if you don't grow this way if you just get this knowledge and put it in your head what if something goes wrong one day and produce prices go up through the roof or or you know who knows what can happen you know i'm not like a prepper um you know some of we have, we have some preppers in here and that and and uh, some of the groups and that's the reason why they're growing is because you know what if something does happen uh you know heaven forbid but if you have the knowledge where you can take something and and at least have a knowledge where where you can you know learn to grow something and get by you know any little thing helps so it's just something kind of cool and it's so i've been looking and, and watching all over the world and like i said india india pakistan some in africa egypt there's there's some different nations um israel uh they're going real hard on hydroponics and they're trying to make it cheap and and get the cost down and it's really interesting some of the technology that they're coming in and using but my, getting off on a tangent again the reason why i was saying that was somebody was saying something about like the the rock wool and and things too uh, i've seen some of them where they don't even have a net cup or a pool noodle and you have an nft system that's nutrient film technique and that's just where the water is just flowing on the bottom of the trough and they'll take the rock wool when the little plant sprouts out of it and they just drop it in there and i think spring hill farms that's another one see we're gonna have all these people on there there's a lot of people i learned from they're up in canada and they are a small commercial farm and i think that's what they do they just take the rock wool and they just set it down in that trough and that little nutrient film just goes along the rock wool pull some of it up but they don't bother with net cups and, and all of that you just you grow it in the rock wool and set it down in there so if you don't mind buying rock wool then you can buy it in bulk where you can get it at a decent price you know, there, there. Like I said, there's all different ways that you can go. So, um, any anybody that's coming here and looking for one way, the end all, beat all way to do things, it it's not going to happen because I've been experimenting for I don't know. You can ask Keely like six or seven years, and I'm still changing. And, and even Keely, she comes up with ideas. You know, out of the blue, she'd be like, "Hey, why don't we?" try this or why don't we try it this way and we'll go get some stuff and 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 try it and and the things that i'm sharing you know are the things that that work for me and 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 it wasn't like i just thought of that one day and just went and did it i had them all over the porch and i had them growing for a year or two years before i even made a video and, and shared it with people um so we're always experimenting and, and like i said i hope all of you guys are experimenting and um you know if we can get together, like I said, in our Facebook group or something, you guys can share with each other. That'd be awesome. Groundhoggy. My husband cried over Tommy the Tomato. Thanks, Peggy. I had fun. Um, I hope you all don't mind. It's not... Uh, when I was sharing videos, I'm 52. And when I was 17, uh, if I start to bore you all, just let me know and I'll get back to gardening. But... I, I had a job in, in with uh, some people, some entrepreneurs, and they, they were doing videos. And I was real fascinated by it. And But back then, you had the camera was about this big. And you had a VCR you had to carry on the side and, and spare batteries that, that were this big. And video editing equipment and things like that were, like, real expensive. And I never really got to get into it. And then life comes along, and, and I started working restaurants, and I did that for, like, 20 years. Then my wife started her art business and it started to take off. So she needed some dumb guy to carry her uh, ladders in and out and clean up and, and wipe paint up off the floor. So I went ahead and did that for years. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I've always wanted to, you know, be creative and that's why I like working with her and, and we paint murals and do faux finishes. And when YouTube came around, and everybody started buying cameras and and editing free the software's free now you know there's all kinds of stuff that we can do you know before you had to go and spend a lot of money you had to buy the best cameras and and all the editing equipment was expensive and everything's getting cheaper and cheaper and now someone like me who doesn't have a lot of extra money to spend on on stuff like gear and editing i could just go make videos so it's not like 
you know, I just started doing it one day. It's something that I've always wanted to do. So when, when I do these funny ones or something that's a little different and put these things into it, uh, it's just my creative soul trying to, you know, get out. And uh, I could make another channel, but right now my wife started one. She's doing things like this. Watch me knock it out. She's doing centerpieces like that. So she's going to be putting those. She's probably having a heart attack in there like I'm going to drop it. So I have to help her with her, shoot hers and, and edit it too and then all this other stuff. So I really don't have time to just make a channel to, to let my creativity out. And I could just make a, one channel that's just straight up tutorials where I'm just sitting here just talking and, you know, you need to do this and you need to cut this. But but I enjoy being creative and, and I hope that you guys don't mind Uh I'll share all my knowledge and that with you if y'all put up with my uh, nuttiness. Mike teasing me about it. <laughs> I will grow some screening. Alrighty, cool. Did uh anybody have any more questions? If I I can only scroll back so far. I don't know if Keely's been helping asking some. Let's see. How do you? Oh, here's one. How do you block rain? George, how do you block rain from entering the bucket? How do you block rain from entering the bucket when using a standard five gallon pails with the lid? Oh, okay. Um, I really don't. If you use the, the lid, if you're cutting a hole in it, um, you can cut like a two or three inch hole and use a smaller net cup. And usually the plant gets big enough where it's, not, it's kind of shielding it, most of the rain won't go in. And if you're using a pool noodle, that kind of seals up a, a lot of it. So not a whole lot gets in. Now, if you're doing like we did our tomatoes, where you have the hydrogen, you know, the rain can just get in there, but the, the hydrogen kind of stops a little bit too. It's not like there's a big gaping hole in there. Um, and then the tomato's grown kind of big and has a canopy, so it kind of covers it a little too. So it doesn't fill up that much. Another thing I do is try to besides the sun like giving it morning sun um trying to give it some shade is that i'll put it near an overhang or get it somewhere where something's going to block a little bit of the direct rain um and one thing else too is i forgot to show it and somebody i don't know if he's here tonight somebody keeps telling me to to remind people and i keep forgetting to do that but like this guy right up here um the end's bent and i don't have it sealed up and when you go to fill it up, it doesn't fill completely up and it overflows. So there's, there's a little something that stops it from overflowing is because I haven't bent that completely up. But the five gallon buckets or some of the other containers, what I do is I drill a small hole um, up the container somewhere, wherever like your neck, that cup comes down. You want your water when it first starts to be touching the bottom of that cup about that level, a little bit like a quarter of an inch above it is where I drill a hole. And then when I refill it, it won't ever go all the way back up and drown the roots. So that way you don't have to, when I say keep it between a half and three quarter inch, or uh, three quarters full, if you drill you a little hole, you can't never fill it up past that because it'll drain out that hole. Um, I'll try to show that in another video, but some of those uh, containers that I got, the gray container with the handles, the handles clip on, they have holes that, that they clip on. So there's little holes already in there, so there's no way you can fill it completely back up. And so I like using those because I don't have to bother with it, and that's why I forgot to show some people. But but somebody kept reminding me of that, and I had forgot forgotten about it. Um, these things, like I said, if you use a pool noodle, it kind of expands and keeps most of the rain out. And if you pull one of, if you get a harvest, like you get on, pull one of these guys out and go toss them in your soup. Don't leave the hole empty. You know, take an empty pool noodle and jam it in there and cover it up because you're stopping the light, stopping the algae, and you're keeping the rain from going in there too. So, hope that helps. Let's see who's next. How do you block rain? Whoa, I'm way behind here, Keely. Freedom asked, are you limited to what can be grown in the cracky method? Uh, yes and no. Uh, you can try anything you like. The best things, that, that in my experience, is the leafy greens. Now there's somebody else, I don't know if he's in here too, you know, another garden buddy, Matt Garver. If you go check out his channel, um, 
he used a 16 gallon tote like y'all saw us growing the Swiss Chard in this, uh, I think two or three videos ago, we had Swiss Chard. Um, it's a 16 gallon tote and he grew uh, peppers in there. And he daisy chained them together with some tubes and then put one big container full of nutrients up a little higher so gravity fed when, when those went low. So it kept it at a constant level. But he only put those together in, in one um, container and it didn't bother with it. You don't water or anything and covered it up. The um, container, the plant came up through and I think he covered it with a plastic bag, like a black plastic bag. And those plants were huge and they had hundreds of peppers on them. And it was just, you know, just putting it out there. I'm not sure if he went, you know, peppers, sometimes if you prune them, you prune them back and they get bushy instead of like they can get long and straggly. And um, he might have pruned them, but as far as watering them and doing things like that, he, he didn't do it. So peppers, tomatoes, anything that's like a heavy drinker or it, it has a long growing season, you're either going to need a bigger container, which is good too because that keeps it cool. Like the 16 gallon containers, it takes a long while for it to heat up. It's got to be, you know, now if you go put it directly out in the midday sun in the summer, it's going to heat up fast. But if you keep it in shade, you know, you've got a lot of mass there. Um, Anything like people were asking about watermelon, cucumbers, you know, everything like that. Those are tough. If, 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 if you're asking about that, the, the best thing to do is start with leafy greens first. That way you kind of understand how the system works, what the plant's like, how, how long in between feeding it's going to take. Um, the, the bigger plants are going to suck up the water and the nutrients. Anything that's like a tomato, anything that's juicy like watermelons and things like that is going to suck up. A whole lot and and you guys if you do a traditional garden you know that too that that you probably have to water those more than you do you know like leafy greens and and, and things so some some things don't they, they take a lot more care I would start with leafy greens stuff that's easy like the pak choy that you can take that I mean we just love taking a couple of leaves running inside and just throw them up cut, cut them up throw them in my soup um, all your herbs and everything you know start with that and once you get the hang of it, go ahead and try a couple of tomatoes and try, you know, a cucumber. I've seen some people growing cucumbers inside their closet with a, a little grow tent. Um, they, they, they look like they were about six feet tall and, and had, you know, two dozen cucumbers on them. So uh, it, it's possible, but it, there's a little bit of a learning curve, just like in traditional garden, you know, it's, uh, hard to do different things, but here you go. What well, CB says, I use 10 gallon totes. Yeah, so you're a 10 gallon tote. They're, those are, like I said, so, um, and what's that for, CB? Is that for peppers? You use them with peppers? If you're growing vine type plants and melons, cracky would be very hard to keep up with. Yeah, yeah, they can get away. I've seen some people, I mean, you get excited and, and it's fun to experiment with, and I've tried a couple. But uh, like I said, it's a, it gets to be more work and more trouble. Whereas, you know, that's why my channel says cheap and easy or, or quick and easy. And it's it, because I want people to be able to do something and, and just reap the benefits from it that there's a little small learning curve to it. But after you master that, if you want to try something different, you can. But, but I wouldn't like strawberries don't seem like they're very much. I've had a trouble growing strawberries and, and regular spinach. That's why I had the water spinach. Marty said, hey, try this. And I was like, yeah, I ordered some. And I was like, man, this is fantastic. But spinach, you know, when it gets in the heat and, and the, the, its roots being in the water, I was having a real tough time with those. And I was having a tough time with strawberries. So people keep asking about strawberries. They, they want it. Somebody asked about blueberries too, but that's a bush. You really can't grow a bush in, in this kind of system. But I'm experimenting. I've got some strawberries. You know, we've got a handful of little strawberries off of it. You know, nothing to write home about. But you can do it. Like I said, if you if you don't have a garden somewhere to put it down, you know, we're experimenting. We're giving it a try. And, and then I'm going to see if we can keep them alive the whole grown season. And then trim them back and try to overwinter them in the house and see if, you know, just like you do strawberry plants. I think out in the garden, we, we just kind of trim them back and cover them with mulch and... and uh, let them grow back the next year. There's there's different different things to do. Lettuce, peppers. Yeah, y'all get with CB there. Like I said, and uh, 
check out his channel and all, all the stuff that he's growing. His greenhouse looks awesome. I'm uh, renting right now, and I had a greenhouse years ago, and now I'm renting, and I can't put one up, so I'm jealous. But uh, I might put up a little shade house, just a little little tiny shade house. Indeterminate tomatoes are my favorite tomato plant. Thomas, Thomas said indeterminate tomatoes. Yeah, if you can, I mean, those are those are easier too if you're just starting cracky and you can get an indeterminate or something that's just a small bush that fits on this five gallon buckets, pretty good. Um, who was that? M MPH Gardener. I'm, I'm just throwing all these names out. Like I said, I've watched so many people and learned from them, but he grew like a greenhouse full of uh, um, tomatoes and it was with, uh, I think, the drip system in hydroponics. And they were just like all the way up to the ceiling and and they would grow and, and have so many tomatoes that you had to go and let them down because they were touching the ceiling and let them down and, and trim them up. And uh, just like, I don't know if y'all have ever seen a hydroponic uh, tomato um, greenhouse. Those things are just fantastic. But he was growing a lot like that. Jerry closed up and smashed a garlic clove. Sneak preview I showed in the Pepper House. You got spot a few of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, he did, he did a little CB, did a little quick sneak peek because it's not set up yet. And their warm weather's, weather's just coming in and they're just starting their little seedlings and that. But he kind of showed in there a little and you can have a little peek at it. But keep an eye on him and that watch his peppers because that was kind of fantastic last year too. And uh, even a straw bale gar garden, you know, I'm, I'm growing hydroponics in that, but watching all this other stuff is just cool. Um, I was watching like the, what's that, where they're growing the wood chips, like uh, Eden, um, Garden of Eden growing and, and different things. This is just real fascinating. I check them out. I'm going to do it running. Let's see. Water supply and shade. Yeah, George, and just keep up with the, this, the group. And like I said, uh, YouTube is kind of funny because we'll put out a video and some people will comment, but then it, it gets kind of lost after that. So if you join like Facebook group and I don't know if CB has one and, and Pepe, but all these guys, you know, they have groups too. You can join those and Twitter. Oh, I've got all right down here. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Lots of you guys have been following me for a long time on, on YouTube and I forgot to even mention any of this stuff. And I'm on Twitter like all the time. And, and I post a little pictures on Instagram. But they have direct messages over there. If you got a question and that, instead of like YouTube where, where it gets lost in a video afterwards, you can go on Twitter or Instagram or something or, or Facebook, you know, any of these other social programs and uh, platforms rather. And uh, Mike Van Duzzi, you know, that's my name. And then all these guys that are there, we were all over the place. You can just message and usually within a day or two, you know, we're messaging back. Sometimes if you're on Twitter, you can ask a question. And if I've got my phone in my pocket, I'm not busy, I'll be answering right there. So definitely go, you know, follow us around on those other platforms. This isn't, isn't just like a, a vanity thing where we're like, oh, I've got a thousand followers or whatever. It's, you know, this is more of a way that we can all communicate with each other, uh, whatever works best on whatever platform. So uh, let me see. Mike. Do you have to manage pH a lot? Sorry, it has been asked before. That's all right. No, but I, and like I said, this, this chat's just flying by and I'm not used to to reading a chat and answering questions. It's my first kind of uh, Q&A. So if you missed, ask again. And, and like I said, I'd put, put a little emoji or something to get my attention. But uh, pH, if you want to, look, all the stuff that I'm teaching everyone is to make it as easy as possible so that so that almost anyone can can do it and, and I got a story to, that goes with that but all this other stuff that goes with traditional um, hydroponics whether it's the pH or aeration or your parts per million or how much uh, goes into it, any of that stuff anything that you can do that you are willing to do can help you know I'm not knocking traditional hydroponics I'm not saying that's just they're just trying to take your money that's not good you know that's that's all good if you want to grow you're you're going to grow better vegetables you're going to grow more and it's going to be easier but you're going to have to put up the money up front to get all equipment and you're going to have to go through the learning curve and you're going to have to constantly monitor it so if you want to that's fine you know they've got ph up and ph down 
And that's why I tell everyone to start this, a couple of small containers where you live, because besides just the wind and rain and sun and, and, and the weather in different places, I mean, all over the world, it's not just in, in, in the United States, it's all over the world, it's different. And then when you put in your different fertilizer and then you, when you're talking about the pH, your water, uh, we all have different hardness of water. Um, that's calcium that's in your water. That might affect your, your NPK. Um, too much of it, I think, uh, can mess up your roots in that too. And so I always start with small containers like when I moved here. That's why we have a small kind of garden and just what we needed for ourselves. And I don't grow too much more. I don't go crazy. Um, is because if, if it doesn't work out, then I know I've got to adjust something. Uh, you can get your water tested, the pH. You can go, if you don't want to buy a meter, you can just take it up to the, your agricultural department and they'll test it for you. Um, and you can get a general idea of what your alkalinity is like if, if you need to do any adjustment to it. But I, I try to do things as simple as possible. And... All of those guys, my hat's off to everyone who does that and they want to get out there and test it and pH up and pH down. But um, back when I had, remember what I was talking about, the big deep water culture where we built the big troughs and filled it with a whole lot of nutrients and then just laid a raft floating on it? You had one trough to check or another trough, you know, a couple of them. If you make a bunch of these and they're all over the place and you're having to go out and, and check the pH in this one and check the pH in that one and check the pH in that one and this one needs to go up a little and this one needs to go down a little because your pH you can't just say oh it needs a quarter cup of this or quarter. you know it's, it's a few drops at a time usually and then you have to wait to see if it goes up or down and then a few more um, some of these other guys they're experts at it uh, let me see if uh, anybody here can offer anything if anybody in the, the what you call it knows anything about the pH that's you know, that, that you're uh, uh, better at, you know, if, you, if there's an easy way to do it, you can help people. But to me, yeah, somebody said lemon juice. You, the old fashioned way, the way I would do it is lemon juice and um, baking soda, I think, that we used. And you make your pH go up and down if you don't want to buy it because that gets a little expensive too. You, you know, like I said, it's I'm trying to teach people how that where the normal person can just, you know, grab something and put it together, it works. And, and that's why we're not out here saying, hey, look, I grew a watermelon with, you know, this system or, you know, I'm trying to show you the easiest way to get you some food where you can grow it fast. You can walk right out your kitchen door, make you salad, put on your sandwich. You know, the, it's not the end all beat all, but, but it's the simplest. And uh, maybe it goes back to I'm lazy again. I don't want to go out there and check, check the pH on everything and, and try to monitor it because it's, I, uh, like I said, I've got a lot of these little guys all, all around. If you, if, you, if you do your, some people have the hydroponic setup where everything drains an NFT system. Everything drains to one pipe. It all goes back to one reservoir and it gets filtered and gets pumped back again. And they've got that one thing to check. Then yeah. And they've even got um, equipment that monitors it and it can auto dose the pH up and down. You know, if there's different things you want to do like that, you can. But but if I had to go around and, and check all of these guys all the time, I'd, I'd probably say, you know, forget it. Um, Mr. D, do you have smaller packages of nutrients already made up for the five gallon? I recall you mentioning it in another video. Do not see it on Amazon. Yeah, um, I'll tell y'all what. If anybody wants to try it out, what I did before was I just gave out one sample. I think it was like four ninety nine, two ninety nine, or something. And whatever shipping is, I got to get little baggies and envelopes. Um, I was doing like a little sample so people could try it. But, you know, I'd, um, there's only so many that I can pack up. And uh, when I put it in a shop, that was back when my YouTube channel only had a couple thousand subscribers. And I really wasn't doing anything on Facebook. And now we're up over 12,000 or 13,000 and, and Facebook's been pushing my, my videos out for this program we're in to like hundreds of thousands of people. Um, if I put it out for sale, I could be mixing up nutrients all day and then stand in line at the post office. And, and then I'd send out a little package and somebody's like, oops, I had the wrong address. And, and I don't want to be mean and say, well, you know, 
you know, tough luck, you know, you got to buy another one, you know, I'd go back and ship it back out, you know. So I'll do that to, to help some people. I, if you guys see any of the thing, the Etsy shop where my ebook is, I've got like in the description of all my stuff, the ebooks on there. I've got a little listing for the nutrients. If, if you guys want in the next week or so, I can put it up and I can do a couple of them. But um, this isn't my full time job. I work with my wife. Uh, we do decorative painting and, and all kinds of things. That's why we're on the road a lot. So it's not so much that I don't have time to make it and, and actually do it. It's sometimes I'm gone. And some of the videos you guys see me put up is because I've batch made some videos and they're scheduled to go out. Um, and when I'm answering, I'm, I could be on the road answering comments, but I can't be on the road packaging up nutrients or, or packaging these things up and going out to the post office so i don't have anyone working with me to to do that stuff uh if anybody wants to try it because i want everyone to try and you just need like a sample i can either put it up there and i usually do that because it goes through a different place a secure place where there's a record of somebody you know paid for shipping or paid this and that that that's where i got the address from and i'm shipping it it's unscrupulous things can happen with the internet and i just don't like somebody like emailing me and and giving me an address and you know what I mean I, I like there to be a record somewhere just to keep everything above the board because I seem like a nice guy and everything but you shouldn't trust anyone on the internet and just just give them your information or do anything like that just just in a an email so I do it in some kind of public thing you know so there's at least a little level of of security there and then people, if they order something with their credit card, they don't have to give me their credit card information that it, it goes through that. So that's the reason why I use it. Once again, that's like a 30 minute answer to a, a small question. But let me see if, hopefully Keely's been helping you all out. Keely works with me a lot and she she helps grow and she, she knows a lot of the things that I do too. Just like CB, his wife uh, works with him. You know, they, they're both real knowledgeable. Uh, so what do you call it? If y'all got questions, I'm sure Keely can answer some of them. CB Mike, I do have a video this year. I do have a video this year for the pH and PPM for master blend plus how to use it without weighing the amounts. Okay. So you, you've got it out already. When we, when we get better at this guys, um, my wife, I just, I just told her like, minutes before the stream i said hey i'm gonna go live stream uh can you be a mod and she was like okay what i do and uh so she doesn't know but but uh in future streams we'll we'll be ready and if somebody like like cb if he's got that video she can get the link and then drop the link right in the description there and y'all can get it so uh, i apologize for this being our first one it's a little rough like i said an informal get together but you can always go to his channel and just check it out. He says that now he's he does the hydroponics in that traditional way and and has the meters and checks everything. So if you all have any questions, like I said, that's the reason why I don't. There's guys out there. There's experts. There's people who have been doing it and, and they got the answers and I can just point you to them. There's no sense of me being redundant and, and doing it again and and having to. Um, work with all of that stuff when when there's other people you can go check. I say, no, I do not one. Oh, I'll do one soon. I already have one, but it's not using Master Blend. Okay, he's got one without Master Blend. Uh, so he's going to be using Master Blend, and he's going to do a video. If you, you guys look back through his old stuff, he probably has one with a, a different nutrient or something that he was using. But uh, keep an eye on him. Let's see. Yes, I have. I've tried Brent's Neem Solution. Okay, Amazon smaller container. Rebecca says, yes, I have. I've tried Brent's neem solution, sterilizing everything. Don't know what I'm doing wrong. So so what was happening? Were you getting mold or something? Is that why I think Brent's uh was that was that the one that has like a oregano oil and neem oil and and if I'm not mistaken? Cause I was gonna try that too. I haven't gotten around to it. Um I just stuck, I made a little shelf in our kitchen and wrapped it with reflective material and I put a fan in it 
and we're going to just have some of our microgreens, like I said, our sunflower shoots and that, um, just have them up there. And I put the little fan in it to have a little circulation that kind of helps with the, the mold issue and that. Someone else too was making like an enclosed one with a fan on it. Like I said, there's all kind of fantastic people on the internet. Um, uh, everyday harvest or, or um, heavenly harvest. I forgot it's, it's, it's someone else. I, I'll, I'll be more prepared on the next one and, and get these names for y'all. Let's see. It's cool what you're doing. I use three different fertilizers. Oh, cool. So CB says he uses three different fertilizers. Would you have any suggestions or tips for growing inside lighting bugs? Yeah, for growing inside, uh, you're going to need lighting. And like I said, if you need, I don't know if uh, Brad's still here, if you see hidden harvest grow lights. It's real interesting. Go check him out. They, they have all kind of grow lights, uh, like on Amazon. It's kind of hit and miss now because it's becoming so popular and it's becoming more of a DIY thing. Uh, before, it was just all professional stuff that was out. And if you, if you could get it, it was like expensive, but it worked well. And now they have all kinds of stuff like, you know, China's getting in on it and just making any kind of cheap LED that, that kind of looks like it and, and throwing them out. They're cheap, but there's not enough uh, wattage and, and that and not, uh, not enough light for your plants to grow well. Um, you know, some of them might be there. There's so much out there that, you know, it's just kind of mind boggling right now. But but Brad's got this light and it, it's a full spectrum light. And uh, if you all go check him out, it looks like he's doing pretty good. And he's giving away some lights to different people and they're trying it out. And I've just heard good things so far. So I'm definitely going to be thinking about getting one of those. Like I said, we don't grow inside, but if there's lots of people interested in it, I'll go ahead and get one and, and try it and, and uh, show you all and do some exper experiments myself. Someone else to check out is, let me, Garage Greenhouse. He's got some cool videos and he turned his whole garage into a growing thing. I think it's mainly for, they grow microgreens just to eat and some to, uh, they give friends and that, but it's just full of microgreens and uh, he does it all indoors um, with the lighting and ventilation and everything, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if I think of all this, I'll put links down in the script a afterwards when this video goes up. I'll go ahead and, and get them and put them up there. If not, we'll put them in the Facebook group or, or future videos. But, uh, yeah, he was Garage Greenhouse. And there was a couple of other guys. Like I said, there's a lot of people out there. It's, you can learn all kinds of stuff. But you got to watch them too because it's there. There's some people that you know just put something up, they make it look pretty. Like I can do that, just you know that's a fake plant up there for my wife's thing. But but I can, you know, just get my container and go buy some pretty plants at the store and put it in there and take a picture and say, look what I grew. That's why when things go wrong, I want to show you all that too. And then sometimes I do things on purpose because there's mistakes that people made that that I've made like over the years, and I like to do it wrong too, so that. Uh, you guys can, can see it and that we don't have like a thousand people doing the same wrong thing. You know, we can all learn from each other. Let me see. Someone highlighted my name here. Is Master Blend all right to use? Yeah, Master Blend's more than all right. I, that's all I've been using so far. I'm, I'm trying some different things, but it's because people are asking. They can't get it everywhere, but but I love the Master Blend. Um, let's see. Alaka Al 99 I want to try the gutter method, crack tea for outside, but I'm worried about evaporation and overheating the water. I live in central South Florida. Well, yeah, you're just gonna have to watch, like I said, keep it in morning sun and keep it in shade the rest of the day. I'm, um, what do you call it, North Florida. And if you watch all my videos from the past two years, it's all from up, up here, North Florida, and, and our temperatures aren't all that different I think from where you're at so um, like I said just uh, don't leave it directly out in the sun kind of shade the container if you need to during the summer it's going to be a little different and you might want to look into NFT system too if everybody's worried about that like this crack key system that's just the cheapest easiest way and like I said I can leave it especially during cooler months like this and I can be on the road and not even worry about it. And when I come home, I know that there's, you know, everything's all right. If, if the containers weren't like um, almost, you know, empty before I left, but you might want to look into the NFT system because that's a little more work. It just takes one pump and you keep it pumped in, but that water keeps recirculating and the reservoir, you can take that and have it in the shade all the time. Your plants don't need to be where the reservoir is at 
or you can bury the reservoir. Anything you can do, you can keep that cool. And that pumps the water up through the tubes, kind of like that one, I don't know if you all saw like the the one garden, the one set of pipes that are about chest high when we go out there and we're just picking all the kale and collards. That That's just a simple one, goes down 10 feet, turns around, comes back 10 feet and dumps right back into the container. I do, I'll do a video on that coming up soon, but that keeps it moving so that that water stays instead of like up here where it's it's long and flat and it can heat up quick it stays it has mass so it stays in a big container and when it gets pumped it just runs through it and comes back and it gets pumped back in so you can keep that container shielded from the sun because there's no plants on the reservoir and you can keep that cool and that works a little better in the, the hot areas in that because then then it's pumping cool water around the roots instead of like this where it'll start out cool in the morning and then it'll gradually just raise up and raise and there's no way it's going to drop the temperature until you get nighttime and the sun goes down so the nft system might be the way to go real cheap to do too you don't have to do real fancy stuff like i said the the two pipes cost the same as these two pipes 12 bucks for a 10 foot section uh, a couple of elbows I put silicon on to hold them together so that I can get it back apart. It's a little rough trying to get it apart, but if you, you put PVC glue, it's never coming apart. Um, I use silicon and then I break it down, but I, I have two 10 foot pieces. And, and before, a couple years ago, I had like three or four with one pump. And I think the pumps are cheaper. They were about 50 or 60 bucks for ones that pump up about six feet. And I got mine on Amazon Last year, I think I got a new one for like 25 bucks somewhere. Um, so it's not, it's not all that expensive to get one of these systems set up. And if, if you're watching our other videos where you see all that kale and collard growing about this high, that's all that is. It's a little tote, one pump, little irrigation pipe, and the water just goes back and forth. Real simple. We'll, we'll show you all that too. Like I said, I got to get everybody up to speed, you know, and then it's baby steps and then we'll graduate to something else. Let's see, hydroponic gardening anymore. Brent has a spray that he uses on his microgreens to help control fungus. Yeah, um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that out. Like I said, I've been I've been doing. When my wife's texting me here, uh, Brent's. I think he was inside the chat. Hold on one second, Keely. You can come. Keely, you can come on in here and tell me whatever you need to tell me so I don't have to look here. Uh, Brent's got this spray. And it's supposed to be like an organic spray, but he mixes neem oil, uh, organic, uh, oregano oil, and a couple of other things. And I was going to order all that off of Amazon. And like um, they were saying that he sprays it on his microgreens and it keeps down the mold. Uh, you know, that's one thing. One thing with doing this on like the grow pads and the working system is that you don't have to sit there and watch it every day. Like if you grow microgreens and you set that without the wick system, like traditional microgreens, and you forget to water them in the morning and you take off, sometimes they're dead by the time you get home because they're small and tender. Ask if you're doing a Facebook Live too. Uh, George, I don't know. Let me see. It's getting kind of late. Um, if I get off here, I might just turn on for a, a few minutes and just, just talk with some people. But I'll see, I'll see how long everybody hangs out here and, and um, what do you call it? Hello, figured that's what the message was. Okay, that's what Keila was asking. Yes, like I said, I'm sorry, I get to run in my mouth and then I see the, the chat like going by and, and by the time I look up, you know, things are gone. Um, I was planning on doing them. I kind of figured there'd be a lot of questions and I was going to like Friday when I had the video out, I was going to put out an announcement and do it sometime during the week. But then I thought because I had a lot of people asking and, and saying they're excited about it. I was afraid there'd be like a hundred people in here and me not really get to answer. I'm having a hard time keeping up right now. So sorry to everyone that, you know, I, I put it out and with like an hour notice or two hour notice. And, and on Sunday, um, after I get the hang of this, cause I knew it was going to be rough trying to hook it up and, and trying to get to all of y'all. So I kind of made it short notice and, and I don't know if I have time to get on Facebook. I can stay up late and do that if I need to, if anybody, you know, a couple of people want to get on there, but it'll be getting on like 12 or one o'clock and, and then the people on the other side of the world, you know, waking up or whatever. And then they'll be jumping in and 
I might be on till three o'clock in the morning answering questions. But this is fun. I enjoy it. And, and you guys helping each other out. I see people answering, you know, helping each other out in the chat. I love that. You know, maybe we'll do this more often. And if you don't get your answer, uh, question answered now, you know, just hit me up somewhere or, or we'll have another one um, next week or maybe once a week or once a month. And, and like I said, I can have somebody like CB on, uh, Pepe, Marty, um, Brad from Hidden Harvest. There, there's a, a ton of people out there that, like I said, I learned from them and I'd love to have them on here and you guys can ask some questions and it might help because what time is it? 10 o'clock. Like I've been talking for like two hours straight. So if I have a guest, it might help for me to have somebody else that can talk and, and run their mouth a little and then I can keep up with the chat. So, you know, a learning curve, like, like I said, excuse me, is, is you know, my first one, but it, but it is fun. And, and I think I'd really like to have some of these other people on there. Just wait until you have 300 plus in here. Yeah, CB, that's what, uh, that's why I didn't give a whole lot of notice. I was going to put one out on Friday, but then I thought that'd give everybody a chance to kind of make plans and all that. And I said, I'm, I'm going to try and just maybe just go live and then see if, you know, whoever sees it come up. And, and I know YouTube doesn't notify everybody. And then they'll jump in and I said, maybe I can control. Maybe, the, you know, who knows? We might, I might put out a week's notice and only 20 people might show up anyway. But uh, I didn't want too many people to be in here. I've, uh, I, I've been lurking. Yeah, I've been, it, I feel a little bad, you know, even when everybody comments in YouTube and Facebook and that's why I was doing this. The comments are all over the place and and when i miss one and i'm going back through and i see one that's like a week old and i missed it i feel bad and i feel like when i'm answering everybody else's question there's this one in the middle that that was just left out and it seems like i ignored them and you know and it it just it, you know i don't know it, it if there's an easier way to do it i hate canned responses um so i'm trying to do it all myself right now and i thought that this might be a fun way to for everyone to get together and if i don't have the answers or, or like if you ask a question in the, the chat there's going to be a lot of people that we know that have the answers and like I see, said I see a lot of you guys over here helping each other out and that's what I was hoping that you know it wouldn't be just me because there's not a whole lot up here you know there's a whole lot of information all these other people that, that I learned from in that and and I figured this would be a good way for you guys to meet each other too and then for us all to hook up and this this just be like one party that we we can do this once a week or something and and, you know, this one's two hours, maybe, you know, do it an hour or something or just get on and and uh, share what we've been doing. And, and everybody, I want you to experiment too. everybody try something like this or if you try a traditional garden, whatever you do, if you're doing something and it's it's cool and it can help other people out. I want you guys to get out here, too, and, and, and share it with everyone. Um, awesome. Mike, you have done a great job with this. I've learned lots like the interaction got to go. All right, Freedom, appreciate that. I appreciate all of you. Yeah, yeah, if anybody needs to go, thanks for hanging out. Like I said, I've been, if I missed you, I'm not I'm not overlooking or, you know, I am overlooking. I'm not ignoring anybody. It's just that I've been, um, my first time here, I'm, it's going to take me a little while to, to get uh, the hang of this. I will be doing a run in my pepper house this year with DWC, RDC, and Dutch. Oh, cool. Yeah, check out CB. Watch, watch him because and the Dutch bucket stuff is really cool. I've been watching. That's what I saw at MPH Gardener doing that with the tomatoes and, and things. Um, really neat stuff. Nice. Let's see. It was just dumb luck. I logged on when I did and noticed. Notice you didn't feel bad. Anything crap happens. <laughs> All right, Thomas. Appreciate that. That's what I was hoping. You know, I, I figure if I didn't give too much notice that. You know, some some people would get, you know, YouTube, they, they ding a couple people. And if not, um, it wouldn't be like mass chaos. And I'd just be sitting here. I mean, I fumble around enough already, but I don't want to be too uh, too far behind. D-Zombified, been lurking for the most part, but left you on my other PC using another one to edit video. Awesome. Pretty cool. Y'all check out uh, D-Zombified there, too. Like I said, there's a lot of creators. There's all kinds of people in here. There's people who don't make videos. Who are just you know gardeners and there's some people who are just interested and then there's other people like me where we make the videos we're called creators people call me youtubers but we we do it on different platforms too 
and we're all getting together and, and share tips with each other. And um, there, there'll be a lot of interesting people that you can meet that, that might not even have anything to do with gardening. So y'all like just check each other out in the, the um, chat there and, and check each other's channel out. There's just so many fantastic things out there and so much to learn. Mike, this was awesome, but got to go back to my schoolwork. Oh, yeah. What is that? Ever, Ever rocks. Take a test in only two hours and finish. Whoa, yeah. We're, we're not going anywhere. We'll be back here some other time. You go take care of your schoolwork and I appreciate you stopping in. Really do. Rebecca, you have taught me so much and totally changed my life. Oh, that's sweet, Rebecca. We pre appreciate that. That's what we're going for. Like I said, it's um, we can all help each other. And, you know, I want to go off on a tangent in that again. But it's it's just younger kids who are growing up in this that, that have their phones with them all the time. They're, I don't know if they can appreciate, you know, like us, you know, if we're 50, 60 years old and, and uh, that we didn't have anything. I mean, we were actually using the typewriter that you were – punching the keys and um, the TV. We had an antenna outside and we thought we were big time when, when we had the little thing that would rotate, you turn the little motor, would eh, 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 turn the antenna and your black and white TV would switch channels. But to have all of this technology nowadays where we can take what we learn and share it with people literally all over the planet. I mean, it's just some people, I know that you can uh, just not appreciate that fact and, and just think that it's just your phone or just something cool that you can watch videos on or send a message to someone. But to me, you know, my brain just keeps going. I'm thinking, you know, wow, you know, somebody in, in Norway or something's asking me a question about hydroponics, you know, it's just, it just blows my mind. So, um, the, us just getting on here and sharing, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, that, that you guys said that, you know, you've learned a lot from me and that, but, I learned a lot from other people too. I didn't, you know, I didn't invent everything myself. Is this I tailor made it to fit my needs, but but I learned from a whole lot of other people, and and I figured that this is my way of giving back is just just sharing it with all of you guys too, and all of you guys. I mean, whatever you learn and you try it and, and tweak it your own way, get out there. It doesn't have to be a video. It can be just sharing it on Facebook or or just word of mouth. Just whatever you can do, you know, whatever we do to help each other make the world a better place. Uh, I'm sorry, I know people kind of think, you know, when they see that my channel is like, you know, be the change and, and stuff like that. It's that that's just who I am. It's not a, a catchy slogan or, or trying to catch people. I've just always been like that. 2 a.m. Gary Jones. You're in the UK. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, bud. We're, we're going to try and do things different. Like I said, this was my first one and I was trying to get everything set up and everybody who was here at eight knows that it didn't go off at eight. So there's a learning curve, but I'm going to try and do different streams uh, at different times to accommodate other people so you don't have to wait up to 2 o'clock. But I really do appreciate it. Thank you for dropping by. David, hey, Mike, you learn from others, and I learn from you. And CB, thanks to both of you. Appreciate it, David. That's what it's all about. Like I said, it's just, you know, to it's one thing when we get kind of in a little bubble of our own little world and we watch things and we just do it, but then when you step back and look, at when you share it with one person and that person shares it with 10 more people and those 10 people share it and then you're getting you know a message from you know somewhere you've never heard of or or, or they weren't even on YouTube they were through some different group of some obscure thing but somehow you know they got the information you were, you were giving out it's just you know it's just mind-blowing and I, I really do appreciate it like I said it's so uh, you know and I'm still learning every day and I, I just hope that you know everybody out there, you know, they never stop learning and never stop sharing. Thanks, David. Only about three quarters, but want to leave enough room for both the plants to breathe. Okay, I think my wife is talking to Gianna. Abby. Yeah, they're probably, she's probably asking about refilling it. And these things you want to go ahead and, and keep it between half and three quarters full. You never want to fill it all the way back up because if you go watch what we were talking in the beginning with uh, Dr. Kratke, let me toss this on here. Um, Dr. Kratke, I think I lost my, there we go. Hey, 
His his um, channel is Dekine Approaches, and I had it here somewhere. Now I might be losing all what my stream is messing up, but his name was Dekine Approaches. Is his YouTube channel? He's the one who started all of this, and uh, you'll learn a lot about the method behind of it and and why he did what he did so uh if you you just check him out i'll try to get i'm trying to get it on here but i think we've been on so long my uh streaming software is going crazy and gonna crash there you go the kind of approaches so i had a little slideshow with just different pictures that's up there and i don't know if it's still going through so yeah like i said i'm a Now I lost a chat. I'm an amateur at this, and my computer's not the best. So when I st when I try to do this, start messing around with things, it just says, "Ah, that's it." So if you guys are still there, I said his little channel thing will be up, but you go check him out. Uh, he's uh, he's a real nice guy, and he he doesn't make videos like I do, but you can see it'd be nice to learn from like the master, the the one who started it all. Um, so I'll put that up there. Let me try to get back. All right, y'all bear with me. I might have to end this stream. Like I said, I think that my, uh, what do you call it? It's crap. Keely? All right. Well, I don't know if my computer will even let me shut down, but I'm going to go ahead and say good night. See if that lets me work. Um, unless Keely gets here, or I can turn on my computer and find the chat. Sorry about that. My computer went all wacky. Like I said, it's not, not the biggest thing. And when I tried to stick all that other stuff, it just froze up. It's going to be awesome. Thank you all so much. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and let you all go unless anybody has anything like really important they, they needed to ask. And, and um, hit me up, like I said, on all these, Twitter, Facebook, or anything. I answer your questions. Uh, Twitter's the best for like immediate kind of stuff. Um, but I'll be doing this like... Uh, I'll do it again next week. Maybe we'll do it a little earlier, do it at a different time. If anybody's got any suggestions as to what time or day would be better, we can do that. But, you know, if we need to, we can do it a couple times a week. I think it'd be pretty cool. And if we do it at a different time, some of our other people that are in different time zones can join us too. Um, all right. Yeah, mine, mine's working. Yeah, it's not, it's not the internet, boo-boo. It's, uh, it's my computer. It's, uh, what do you call it? It got used to just sitting still and me talking for two hours. And then when I went to try and change everything up, it was, it said it wasn't having that presentation at the same time. Yeah. Streaming. That's right. And I tried, like I said, I put, we wired, I'd write to the modem because I knew that if I did it Wi-Fi, it was going to mess up. But did it turn out, is you guys who are out there watching it for, did you get a lot of lag or, um, I don't know how to read all this. It says how many frames. It, we didn't drop any frames, but um, I got it hardwired instead of the Wi-Fi. Uh, did was it choppy or is this okay? Is it enough to? I know it's not like a high quality video, but was it enough for us to communicate in that for most of the night? Those darn squirrels at it again. Yeah, the squirrels are running around out there chewing on wires and everything. Good night, everyone. All right, good night, George. Take it easy. Talk to y'all later. Weekends are perfect. All right, we'll be here next week. Awesome, Dizombified. Cool, and I'm going to be checking you out during the week, too. I see we all check out everything out. All right, I'm going to let you all go. We really appreciate it. Pepe, good night, man. Excellent job. I'm off to have lunch. Vegemite. Yeah, Vegemite. We're over here. Some people, when I say something about that, people are here looking at me like I'm crazy. I think sometimes we can't get that. We have to get, like, Marmite or something. But um, have a good one. Y'all check out Pepe. Like I said, if you want to learn how to grow microgreens, uh, that's just an awesome resource right there. And 
Rock on, Pepe. Um, his IG account is awesome. All right, Keely, Groundhog. Looked like it froze up. Yeah, it did. It did. It did, Peggy. It, it froze up. I was trying, like I said, I don't have the best computer in the world. When I tried to put Dr. Cracky's little name up there, it, it started acting up. So um, appreciate it. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Uh, I guess I'm not used to doing this, but if if, if y'all gave it a thumbs up, appreciate it. And, and uh, we'll go ahead and have one of these next week if y'all like. I'll... I'll give you a little bit more notice. Like I said, right now, this time, uh, I did it just so that we wouldn't have like a ton of people, but, um, I'll try to keep them to maybe about an hour unless, you know, we don't have much else to do, but, uh, we'll do it again next week. It might be a little earlier. So, all right. Aloha, Gianna, Abby. Hey, how are y'all doing? Appreciate it. Some of these people, I don't know if some of you are just now joining or if you've been here a while and I've missed because, like I said, my, my little uh, chat box here, too, is acting squirrely. But appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, appreciate everyone who shares anything like that. And, uh, and I hope that everybody gives some of this a try. And love to everybody. Live to inspire. Keep on growing. Be the change. All right. Good night, everyone.